Hi, so I'm going to explain to you how to form bread star event effectively for the standing. So first of all, we look at the stall. You need to travel to Citus and then visit Nakat and click operational supply. So there are three rank for the event. Once you reach rank three, champion, then you can start farming. Uh, the standing. First thing first, you need to buy Eidolon Philasis. This one is important so that you can farm more standing and also with another potion catalyst into the mixer, we can also farm Relay for Nidus Prime. And then also pick up Snipertron, Eater, Dagger. These are not the powerful weapon, but we need the weapon for mastery rank. If you have no time and not planning to grind this event, between these two arcane, I will recommend you to pick up Exodia Contagion and make it maximum rank. A melee projectile damage increased by 400% after traveling 30 meter. This one is good on uh, Black Giver or Black Give Buff. You can install the arcane only on Zor weapon and then they will unleash a projector to attack the enemies from far away so it can be quite fun and also very powerful so pick this up then if you have spare standing only then you pick up also Exodia Epidemic this one is just for fun in terms of damage, Exodia Contagion is better. And then also my beloved Guso. You need to pick this up, very fun. It's not powerful but fun. Brad Arvin, Brad Kiva, Brad Bogwin, Brad Kipaf. If you are really low in standing and you don't have time to grind, then pick up Brad Kiva and Brad Kipaf. This handle you can ignore, but take this and this because of the viral damage. The viral damage is innate, so it's really good. And then Azodia Contagion. Fumination, uh, it is quite outdated now because we have prime version of it. But also pick it up just in case if you need it in the future when you don't want to spend more polarity and then sacrifice this one is for your sentinel also pick this up not bad and it's not very expensive just 1500 standing and then for the rest only emblem is worth it for tantrius this this type of resources citrus whip only buy it when you have spare standing buy the most important one and of course all in all, we are farming it for Forma. It is already built Forma, not the blueprint. So this event is really, really good. Not only you get the Nidus Prime relics, you also get free built Forma from this event and unlimited. There's no cap in how many Forma that you can grind. You can grind for hundreds if you have the time. And then you go to Konzu and pick this mission, Bread Star. For Bread Star mission, if you have a good team, four of you, each one will have different role and cooperate, then this mission can be done in 10 minutes. Then you follow the marker. It will lead you to the mixer. So, so after you take the mixer, Go back up and then you travel to the yellow marker and you are going to defend this toxin so you put it inside but still having a full team is recommended but when you deal with randoms from recruit check some of them they don't know what to do so you have to specify step by step you need to come here, you need to put this in. So that's kind of annoying sometimes and some of them won't listen. 
So while you are busy fighting, they are happily fishing in the other side of the map. So that is really frustrating. And also some people that have very bad internet connection, especially in open world like Brand of Eidolon. So I will show you a solo build and also later on what I recommend when you want to do it in a good team. So when time's up, you can pick up the mixer and then it will show you the next destination. You just follow the yellow marker and find the fallen drone and insert your mixer into it. If the drone is destroyed, you wasted your time and potion. If you solo, you need to put in 4. So if you are in a full team, each of you only put in 1 potion of each type. And after you escort the drone to the objective, then you need to kill the nearby infested enemies. After you reach 50%, the 3 head boss will spawn. So you cast the hollow ground and then use your fob skill to strip the armor so you can shoot them easier so when it's destroyed you pick up the loot the homocyte can be used for your dojo decoration to build a trophy so remember to pick it up or you can donate to your dojo after destroying it you continue slaying the enemies nearby and it will go up to 99% so cast your hollow ground and then press 4, strip the armor. When the mouth is open, you shoot it. If it's closed, it won't take any damage you want to take that on? now we are going to try with Escalibur Umbra and see how he performs so I am using Akasiska just to test it Not bad actually. And then my ferret weapon home. And then kill the mobs nearby, pick up the loot. And also don't destroy infested spawn pod so that more enemies can spawn and don't kill them first wait for the next stage strip your armor Then kill the mobs. Try to avoid killing them before the next stage so that you can save it for the percentage infested purge. Keep the pot for more spawn. 
even without stripping, Calm is doing well. You can test it and try with Groom. Let's say if you don't need uh, Seeking Shuriken. Or you can use Shadowy Impact or Obi-Ron Prime just now to strip armor or without stripping. Will it take a bit longer? Remember to pick up the load. Alright, now is the final boss. Sweet time. If you are in a full team, it will only take 10 minutes to beat one round. So you can farm a lot of Foma in one day. Let's look at the build that I was using just now. So I'm using Calm, Akasiska, and Guandao Prime. For focus school, I suggest you to use Zenurate for the energy spamming skill but because i'm lazy to change so i just keep it naramon so let's say if you are a support in your team and you do not have good weapon to deal damage then you can use void shadow to protect the console and also uh, to protect your teammates around renders allies within 40 meter invisible i use guandao prime because it looks amazing it is very elegant very beautiful i'm using corrosive slash you can also use viral slash or corrosive hit if you can fit in just the same mods and then akasiska this is a beautiful mini pocket sniper you can zoom in with this weapon and is a CC focus weapon. So prime target cracker, prime pistol gamut. And I mod it for corrosive hit. And then calm. Calm and Kuwa calm both are powerful weapon. And the reason I name it boss because when I kill boss, I bring this weapon. I can rely on it to kill any boss. And look at the amazing status chance, 358%. For Kuwa Comb, you go for CC build. For normal comb, you go for status chance. So you put in all the plus status chance mod. And also put in Galvanize Savvy and plus 40% damage per status type affecting the target. And look at the list of damage type I have. So it will make it very powerful. And then multi shot. You can have corrosive blast slash or corrosive hit slash or viral slash hit based on your preference. Because I'm lazy to change, so this is a well rounded build. I can bring it to any enemy, any fashion. And then Primary Merciless is also a very good arcane to equip on your favorite weapon. And then Vigilance Supply because Calm, the only downside of it is the very inefficient ammo usage. So in long run, you cannot use this weapon. This is only for boss fighting. If you are going for a 2 hours run, you do not bring Calm. You are going to run out of ammo eventually. So that's why I put in Vigilance Supply. 
I can convert the ammo into my primary weapon ammo and also 5% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapon. So that's a nice boost. Oh yeah, before I forget, last time when I do not show my ribbon, some of you say, why don't show me your ribbon? So I should also show you now. Uh, this is the ribbon I have for comb, plus distance chance, plus multi shot and fire rate. The reason why normally I don't show you my ribbon is because some people, they say I don't have ribbon. So what should I use instead? So that's why I only give you the basic molding. And my initial planning of having a YouTube channel is to help out new players and have a step-by-step -step guide to help them do Braille Warframe better. And also you can replace it with many other substitutes like for example more elemental damage or, or higher multi shot. This one is a good one, Vigilant Amanon. 5% chance to enhance critical hits. So this actually pairs well with Vigilant Surprise. So you can have 10% chance to enhance critical hits with both mods equipped. Or if you want to go for utility, you can put in Prime Tactical Pump to speed up your reload speed. Or you can also have fire rate if that is what you prefer. So actually, sometimes it depends a lot on what you prefer. And to avoid making this video too long, I do not go into details of the build that I'm using, like what I normally show to you guys. So later, if you really are interested, I can make more videos on each of this specific weapon for example comb i can explain a lot more and show them in action but for now we are going to move on to the next um setup Next, we look at Obi-Rom Prime that I used just now for the first round. So same thing, Arcane Guardian, Arcane Energize. I am sad that people don't use Obi-Rom Prime, but actually he is very, very good, especially in upgradation because of Phoenix Renewal. This is a powerful mod that many people overlook. So that's the overview of the setup that you need for Brad Star event. And I wish you all the best in grinding format. See ya!